paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This is a classic cottage project. Before you know it, the dock is, you know, sitting two feet out of the water. I was really worried about, about somebody getting injured. What are you going to use to do that? Oh, I don't know. Probably a chainsaw. You do good work. Wow, it's fantastic. Look at that. I'm Colin Hunter. I'm a contractor who is fixing up cottage country one deck, dock, and gazebo at a time. My job is to get the build done on time so people can kick back and have fun at their cottage. Today we're on Grindstone Lake, just south of Dorset, Ontario, at a cottage where the dock is a death trap. We have the structure being so high I was really worried about, about somebody getting injured under the dock. <laughs> Parking or inadvertently driving a canoe or a kayak underneath the dock and, you know, having a head injury or something. Ed McMahon and his wife Pat have differing opinions on the severity of the situation. I'm staring down at the dock thinking, wow, it is a little high out of the water and she's thinking somebody's going to kill themselves on that dock. But they both agree the dock needs fixing. My vision for the dock is that we can sit on the dock and relax, and part of that relaxing is my feet are in the water. What I'm really excited about is actually just getting it done properly. Ed fancies himself a pretty good handyman, and in the 10 years they've been here, he's done a lot of work on the cottage. We definitely bought a fixer-upper. We knew we were buying a fixer-upper. We could see beyond the exterior of the place and the property, and we just had a vision for what it could be. It's not a big deal for me to hammer some nails and drive some screws and cut some wood, and uh, it's actually quite relaxing for me. I really enjoy that. But so far, the dilapidated dock is the one project that has baffled him. I did some work on the dock just to make it safe a couple of years ago because it was kind of the floorboards were rotting and it was a bit of a mess. So this is a classic cottage project where one little thing led to another little thing led to another little thing and before you know it the dock is you know sitting two feet out of the water. My job is to teach Ed everything he needs to know about building a solid safe dock and help him through the construction so that by the time his wife returns next weekend she can dangle her feet in the water the way she's always dreamed of. All right, so show me what you got happening here, Ed. Well, I did some work on this dock a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it's just it's just sitting a little high out of the water. Is the water level usually this low? It's down a bit, but it's not it's not unusually low. It's about where it, where it ought to be. Yeah. But you can see it's sitting up really high. You almost need a handrail. Almost, yeah. <laughs> and it's cantilevered a little bit too much, so I'm concerned about it being, you know, wobbly. Was it built? Well, you, you must have had a smaller dock here before then. Yeah, originally the dock was four feet wide and yep. about 16 or 20 feet long. And then a couple of years ago, I sort of built it out a little bit and I think I may have overdone it. Yeah, it looks slightly structurally unsound, but anyways, it's nice and straight though. Yeah, well, that's good. Here's what we're gonna do. First, we'll remove the old deck boards and frame. Then we'll tear out the two old cribs and build three new bigger ones. Then we'll put a frame on top and deck it. Now it's time for the demo. It's time to tear this dock right apart. Uh, Colin. We could do that, or we could just unscrew it. And what, save the wood? That'd be nice. Not that bad, you know. No. If my aunt Bertha was here, we'd have a problem. <laughs> I 
At the end of this project, I would like to see Ed finally proud of his dock. It's his last project that he has to do. Uh, Ed, when were you when you're putting this together? Did you ever think it'd come apart before it rotted, or what? No, I really didn't have that in mind. That's for sure. When you come across a screw that's stripped, you just sort of dig all the sand out of it and then give it a little blow, like the pee sump, and uh, then hopefully the head's cleared out. Look at that, pops right out. Beautiful. With all the deck boards off, we can see what kind of shape the crib is in. That gives us a really clear idea of what we need in terms of materials. So it's off to the lumber yard. It's a nice drive here to Dorset, isn't it? It's beautiful. Trying to make it so that we only have to make one trip today. Whenever you're going to work on your cottage, the more you can plan and, you know, take a shot at perceiving anything that could go wrong, the better your odds are of going swimming and enjoying the lake later. Yeah. Beautiful day for the lumber yard. Uh, this is where we get the rebar that pins the corner of the cribs together. Right. Okay. Rebar first. Fur is better when it's going to be wet and dry. Yes. Better than hemlock. Yeah. What do you say we do a caper toss competition before <laughs> we do the dark? <laughs> Last one, pal. Oh. Beautiful. Are you excited to go and bang these together or what? <laughs> Absolutely. This, this is when all the fun begins. I'm just going to have a one last look at the, at the nail screws, pressure treated, rebar. It's not really a lot of wood, but we're planning to reuse as much as possible. Getting a job done properly is the most important thing, but for cottagers, getting it done on budget is a close second. Ed McMahon and his wife Pat have a pretty cottage on a lovely lake. What grabbed us most about this place, it was absolutely the view. They also have a dock that is a danger to anyone that comes near it. Really worried about, about somebody getting injured under the dock. <laughs> Ed has tried to reinforce his dock a couple times over the 10 years they've been here. But the result is a dock that sits two feet out of the water and it still bounces and wobbles. If my Aunt Bertha were here, we'd have a real problem, trust me. I'm here to teach Ed how to build a dock that won't make his wife fear for her life. Today is Tuesday and we have to have this done by the weekend because Pat's on her way up and we want to have it ready for her to dangle her toes in the water. Tearing apart another man's dock, you learn a lot about him. Under Ed's deck boards is one of the most common mistakes an amateur dock builder makes. The joists that run the length of the dock are bolted together at the same place. This makes a weak spot right in the middle of the dock. The problem with this is if this crib ever shifts a little bit, it's going to be quite dramatic because all of the joints are right here. So all of our joints are going to remain the same, but we're going to put these joists in a row so that the screw line is completely straight. And then we're also we're going to sandwich on an eight foot two by eight to the side of this. So four feet on either side of the split. So that'll make it really stiff. Yeah. Any opportunity to reuse materials to save money, we're going to do it. And that includes the nuts and bolts. When you're banging these out, leave the nut on. Just a little bit proud of the end of the threads. Give that a couple good whacks and take it out and then we can save these bolts. Yeah, I gotta tell you, Colin, I wasn't, I didn't plan on taking these out for 15 or 20 years. Well, no, a lot of work went into this. Oh. The foundation for this dock is cribs. Everyone talks about cribs, but not a lot of people really understand them. A crib is a frame of timber that looks like a kid's playpen or a baby's crib. But inside, 
Instead of a baby, we put rocks. Lots of big, heavy rocks. This is the uh, definition of so close yet so far, unfortunately. <laughs> Afraid so. Our new cribs are gonna look very similar. They're gonna be the same width. However, the length is gonna change just because this overhang, it'll basically, we're gonna cut this overhang in about half. Okay. So this crib's gonna come to here and same on the other side. That one's gonna move four feet that way. Right. This one's gonna move probably about two feet this way. And then there will actually be a little crib right here. Okay. We'll use the same rocks. Um, it's, it is good that you got a permit for this because it's worse than building a new crib without a permit is taking down an old crib without a permit. Right. It is a fish habitat. Small fish like to hide between the rocks and lots of different kinds of fish lay their eggs inside the cribs. So it's important that whatever habitat we remove, we replace. So let's get going. Let's start pulling the rocks out of here and uh, we can start taking these apart and we'll save the timbers we can, get rid of what we can't use, and then we'll be all fresh for a good start tomorrow. Alrighty. Just move some of these rocks out one by one. It really won't take us very long. And we'll build our new crib about two feet in this direction and another two feet wider. It's important when you're working on cribs that you get a permit to do whatever you gotta do. A lot of the time you won't need a permit to rip off a few layers, but you gotta talk to the building department. If you're gonna completely remove a crib, it's actually harder to get a permit for that than it is to get a permit to build a new one. And that's because you're removing a fish hatchery in a protection zone. Little fish come into the shore so the big fish don't eat them. It's part of an ecosystem. So usually what happens if you are gonna remove a crib is you end up dismantling all of the timbers and letting the rocks just sort of fall down to the floor. And then the fish can still use your old crib materials and enjoy them. In this scenario, we're building them a new house though, so we don't have to worry. It's gonna be bigger and better. They're gonna love it. Removing the old cribs is really hard work, not smart work. You don't have to be too fancy, but your back definitely feels it at the end of the day. Tomorrow will be more of a workout for our brains. I'm kind of looking forward to when we sort of place the new cribs and get them built in. Uh, that'll all be new. Ed McMahon is a pretty handy guy. For the last 10 years, he's done lots of jobs around the cottage. But when it comes to the dock, he hasn't been quite so successful. I'm staring down at the dock thinking, wow, it is a little high out of the water, but I did a lot of work on it. And she's thinking somebody's gonna kill themselves on that dock and we, bet we need to fix it like right now. When we started, it was sitting two feet out of the water and it was bouncy like a diving board. So far, we've unscrewed all the old deck boards and lifted off the frame. Then we got physical and removed the cribs. Now it's time to put in new cribs that are bigger and stronger. You don't have a significant amount of movement in the lake water here, you said? No, it really doesn't go up and down all that much. It may go up and down three or four inches early this spring, but it's nothing. Yeah. Man, my lake was up like six feet this, <laughs> this spring. I just saw docks floating past and they all ended up at the dam. What do you think for height here? If we were to say, go, that one looks around 16 inches up out of the water. That gives you a bit of room. So if the water level does come up six inches, you've, you know, it's still up out of the water. Yeah. It's a pretty low dock, but it's considering that you guys don't have a motorboat and it's a calm lake and you don't have a lot of movement, if you desire a dock that's lower to the water, then that is what we can do. That looks about right. The big question for me is, because I did it wrong last time, is how, how do you calculate how far out that farthest crib goes? Well, Ed, something tells me that you've thought about this enough since you built that first dock that you're gonna be able to show me how to do it. Here's what's going through my mind. Is sure. The plan said that the, the edge of the dock was coming out four feet. So I would probably be tempted to put a stake in the ground four feet from where the end of the dock was. So sort of marking this corner of the dock? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, then, and then just take a piece of string and run it 24 feet out so we know where the end is gonna be and then yep. back it off a foot and that's where the edge of the first crib is gonna be. I thought you told me that you didn't know how to do this. I've been thinking about it. Ed's got a bang on. We're gonna have three cribs. The first one is practically on shore. The other is 23 feet away. And the third crib goes right smack in the middle. Okay, there's 24. It looks about lined up with where the old dock was. Okay, cool. We'll just measure off the water for our heights. Right, because the water's always level. Yeah. <laughs> That's the stuff you don't think about. 
I think Ed was pretty impressed when I told him that we could use the water as a level. You know, it's all these little things that, you know, I'm enlightened to what I do in my career. You're enlightened as to what you do in your career. But uh, just those little things that are like, oh, that's so easy. Why didn't I think of that? Because nobody ever showed you. If you want to lay two out, I'll go and get the drill and some spikes. Okay. The last time, uh, I, I, I probably didn't spend as much time as I should have thinking through what I wanted it to be like at the end. I was working with an existing structure. I was kind of rebuilding the existing structure. And all things considered, I probably should have stepped back from it and thought, maybe this should just all come out and you know start from, from scratch. The thing that we um, sort of focused on today was not building the whole thing on shore. So as we built a row, we would move it into the water and add a row and move it a little farther, just taking advantage of the buoyancy of the wood and, and using the water to make sure that we didn't have to drag this fully completed crib from the, from the shore into the water. So that was a great trick. Okay, let her, let her So I got an inch and three quarters over here. I'm at inch and three quarters here too. Like once we filled up with the rocks, we'll just give it a few shakes. Then we'll put the beams on, make sure that they're level. They're where we're really gonna worry about it. So rocks, beams, and then lunch? Yes, sir. I'm really pleased with how things are going at this stage of the game. We're working well together and, and it's great to have Colin's guidance and that little bit of extra effort on planning really makes a difference. This last course is one of them's in the water, the other one's out of the water, right? The whole thing is kind of like at water's edge. Uh, so we're only going to be able to get one course there and just kind of sit it into the sand. Right. So how are we going to join them together? Uh, the corners, we're just going to notch out six inches and six inches so that one piece goes on top, fits together, we fasten it. What are you going to use to do that? Oh, I don't know. Probably a chainsaw. It's all caveman methods that you use to do this. Nothing's that crazy, Nothing's. there's no secret tool that's gonna help you do this. It's all just old fashioned strings, levels, and eyeballs. Ed, we did a great job on the cribs. They're great. perfect. They look good. You know what that means? Time for the big beams. It's true. Next up is attaching the cross beams. These will hold the joists, which in turn will hold the decking. Attaching them to the cribs is the same as putting the cribs together. Long galvanized nails and a lot of hammering. Well, you know what happens now. I'm gonna just pop in some more nails here. Right. And then uh, you're, you're gonna be doing the joist without me, I guess. Yep. So okay. do you wanna just, we'll just get them started. Wanna bring a few in and we'll see how it looks. Sure. More than anything, we want to make sure the tops are flush with one another. Okay. So we'll just start at one end, put a screw in, put a screw in, put a screw in, put a screw in, and then we're going to screw the whole thing off. Three, three screws every 12 inches. Ed's now got the task of building the deck frame, which I know he's capable of because he built the one we pulled apart. When I come back here, I want to see the frame built. I'm not too worried about anything else. I, I'm going to help him to get the decking done because that's kind of grunt work. Happy to help with that. And then we're also gonna throw some skirting on to make it look really professional. That's what's gonna make his wife really love him. Earlier this week, I helped Ed tear oh, down oh. and rebuild his dock. Oh, we put in new larger cribs, that's the foundation. Then I showed Ed how to yep. build the frame that sits on top of them. Now it's time to see how he's done. I see you got two in, Ed. Well, the two most important ones, I think. It's true, they are. But how is it going? It's... So I, I think we're doing all right. That looks good. Ed has done a nice job on the frame. He's got it pretty much level along the whole length. For the spots where it isn't, we need to cut little pieces of wood to different thicknesses to jam in and level it up. Basically cut a bunch of shims at 3 8 half inch, and 5 8 Okay. And then uh, I'm going to start leveling them off and setting up kind of a jig to get the other ones to the perfect height. Once everything is level, we screw it down. Is that the last one, Ed? Yeah. And now it's time to deck. It's looking good. Mm -mm. We're down to our last couple boards. Yeah. We get these in and then go and put on our Sunday's best fancy clothes. Get ready for the wife. Right on. Make sure that she loves your work as much as she loves you. <laughs> Let's hope so. 
A week ago, this dock was an eyesore, and it was dangerous. It sat two feet above the water and it had a wobbly end. Now it has new larger cribs and a properly reinforced frame. What really matters now is what Ed's wife, Pat, thinks of it. Ready to have a look? I'm ready. We've been working hard. Okay, stop right there. I'm around the corner and have a look. Wow, it's fantastic. You guys have been working so hard. I know it's been really hard for me to stay away. And it looks so safe. <laughs> no boats will get caught under here, children, pets. Didn't take Ed that long to do it. I love how you especially reused all the old materials, but uh, I mean, it feels so incredibly sturdy. It's, it's functional, it looks great. Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's on three cribs instead of wow. two. Wow. And we moved it out about, about four feet. And it's great that uh, we can get into the deep water now. Boats can come up alongside of the dock instead of underneath it. Which Absolutely. Is really novel. I think a lot of your neighbors might be jealous with this. Yeah. And if you sit on the end, you can get your feet in the water. Oh. That's why we did this. That's my dream. Thank you so much. It's awesome. It's incredible. Thank you so much. Oh, good job, guys. <laughs> I think this dock is probably a lot closer to what Pat originally had in mind when she, you know, in her mind's eye when she saw the dock rebuilt. But this time we had a plan and we had some help from Colin and it all worked, so it's great. Really a simple pleasure to be able to come and sit on your dock and, and feel the water and be this close to, to the water. It's just extremely relaxing.